Welcome back to Consider This. I'm Sharad Kutin. With me, my guest, uh, Senator Liu Chintong, also former Deputy Defense Minister. We're talking about, and we ended on, on how, uh, how difficult it will be for Tanji Mudin Yassin to govern, mm -hmm. considering uh, his, uh, his support in Parliament, non untested. And that mm -hmm. has been the subject of much mm -hmm. chatter, mm -hmm. uh, the expectation that Pakistan will move a motion of no confidence when a Parliament opens in May. What do you expect? Is that a likely uh, scenario? A no confidence vote? Not easy for a no confidence votes from the opposition to be accepted by the Speaker and by the Parliament because in the normal circumstances, only government bills are considered and debated. But, but private members' bills are allowed. Are allowed, but uh, the only private members' bill that was allowed in our history was the uh, Hadith 355 bill. That was meant to create troubles for, for Pakatan at the time. Uh, but every day or every bill that is presented to the parliament by the government is actually a confident vote. Given that Tan Sri Mudin has a maximum number of 114, untested, um, a matter of five persons saying that uh, we are, we're sick and we're in hospital, and if Pakatan can gather whoever we have, then we could defeat his bill. Right. Yeah. So And so this, the question is, will it be on the Pakatan side a strategy of constantly defeating his bill regardless of the value of those bills? Or will Pakatan have a much more nuanced position with regard to the initiatives from the Muidin administration? I think it would depend on how the Prime Minister initiates the bill. It would depend on how he justifies the, the bills. It, it depends on how he, he appeals to the public and how he explains his rationale. I mean, if let's say he put a motion and say that, to say that uh, does the parliament support uh, uh, what they call independence of judiciary, and in the, and to support that uh, say to support uh, the government not appealing against uh, Najib's conviction, for instance? I think we will have to support. We will have to see Najib to jail. I mean, we 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 we, we cannot cause the government to fall just because Najib went to jail. That's what we want. That's what the nation wants. Okay, what about MA63? It's something that uh, the yeah, Sarawakans... So, so been I think about. every piece, the government will have to negotiate every piece of legislation with the opposition and with the public. The government cannot come in and bulldoze any legislation. The right. government will have to, yeah. Okay, so th there's that. I mean, you, you've already mm. kind of uh, sketched uh, your sense of what the administration's challenges are mm. going to be. Mm. But what about uh, now the demands coming from AMNO mm. that uh, the administration act against the, f the former members mm. of the mm. Pakatan Harapan mm. administration, mm. that there should be an RCI mm. or the cases that were closed should be open? Mm. I mean, do you uh, foresee uh, a tough time for the Pakatan uh, leadership in terms of maybe legal action being taken against uh, individuals? Uh, on the day that the government fell, I say uh, we may face winter, but we also have to be prepared for spring. I love a metaphor uh, when you know, but, but but let's put it this way: Are we likely to see? I mean, Malaysians are be becoming kind of spectators of their mm. own politics. Mm. This has been uh, three weeks of parliamentarians mm. and mm. their drama. Mm. Nothing to do with the Malaysians. Nothing to do with ordinary Malaysians, mm. right? Um, are we likely to see this back and forth of revenge? Basically, mm. uh, I'm no feeling that they were unfairly targeted after mm. the, their mm. fall. Mm. And now with Pakatan falling, mm. Pakatan uh, members or uh, leadership, uh, uh, leaders being targeted. I mean, are mm. we going to see this politics of revenge play out? Uh, uh, it all us? depends on uh, what the Prime Minister wants to do. I mean, if the Prime Minister is prepared to take revenge on, uh, on his former colleagues uh, and... It's difficult for, for the Prime Minister to justify. The Prime Minister was part of the cabinet. The Prime Minister was at the center of the government that he has just toppled. And all decisions were made in the cabinet, of which he's part of. So I don't think the Prime Minister can go all the way to denounce all the decisions made in the Mahate cabinet. But of course, if politics uh, ended up in a situation in which uh, he's he would take revenge, or his cabinet would take revenge on, uh, on Pakatan, well, we will have to face it. You know, one of the things that he said in his first speech to the nation after he became mm. prime minister was that he wanted to be a prime minister for all Malaysians. Mm. He, it was a very conciliatory speech. Mm. And in fact, mm. in many ways, he reiterated some of the agenda of the Pakatan Harapan mm. government mm. itself, angering people mm. who are supporting mm. the Perikatan. Mm. So um, do you think 
that Modin is likely to go that way, as you said, and take the extreme position of, mm. of taking action against his former colleagues, uh, or rather try to normalize his administration I think by you time. At the moment, you, you look at him, he was probably trying to normalize the situation. And I think deep in his, his mind, he knew that uh, he knows that the ground has not shifted. Those who voted for clean government, those who voted for better economic conditions, are still the same people. The same people will still be voting in the coming election for the same thing. And actually, for the last 12 years since 2008, we have sizable number of Malaysians voting for almost the same thing. I mean, Pakatan uh, in 2008 was getting 47% of vote. Uh, in, in 2013, 51% of vote. In 2018, in a three-way split, Pakatan was at 48%. So the point is that we are now a 50-50 society, and the ground has not shifted. But it, it could shift, right? I mean, the political dynamics mm. can mm. go forward and backwards, mm. right? I mean, mm. what do you think mm. will be the main challenges for Pakatan Harapan in uh, at least maintaining the core mm. support mm. for this kind of middle Malaysia, mm. you know, a moderate politics mm. and so on and so forth, or even extending it. Mm. Is there any chance out of federal government to do that? I think the chance is there because for the first time in the last 20 months or 20 over months, whoever distracted the Pakatan had now has to come back and sit down to think that what, what do we do together? I mean, the civil society members who thought that Pakatan did not do anything now realize that actually there was a coup attempt. Uh, now realize that, well, we have to work together to, to preserve democracy, to, to create that dem democratic space that could be taken away any time. So but do you think we're equipped? I mean, do mm. you think your party members are equipped? There's been a lot of criticism of your party. We actually don't have much time <laughs> for this. But, um, you know, that the, the, they engage in language that was tone deaf, that the optics was wrong, mm. that they just don't know how to deal with cultural difference, mm. so on and so mm. forth. Mm. Is there a lot of uh, leveling up that everybody has to do? I think everyone has to learn something from the episode. I mean, there were people who do not, did not see the, the coup attempt. Uh, there, was, there, was, there was really visible in, in October last year, but no one, no one took attention, or not many people took attention. So I think as a society, we all have to learn that uh, if we don't preserve the democratic space, it can just be taken away. Okay, very easily. quick answer. Can politicians learn a new tricks? Yeah, of course. Are you sure? Sure. Okay, wonderful. Thank you so much for your <laughs> optimism that perhaps Thank not you. all is lost, at least mm. for those who believe in a very different type of Malaysia. Mm. Uh, that's all we have for Consider This. I'm Sharad Kutin, only on Astro One News. Thank you.